Joining me now, Congresswoman Marsha Fudge, Democrat from Ohio, and Karen Finney uh, is also here with me as well. Congresswoman, you've been a strong supporter of Susan Rice. I mean, you were out front when Republicans were attacking her months ago. What message does this send to the right today? Well, the one thing I think it does, Alan, first let me say thank you for having me on, Reverend. Uh, what it says is that when you have a professional, someone who has for their entire career worked in national security, whose academic background uh, lends itself uniquely to this position, I think that the president did today the right thing, not only to serve the president, but to serve the United States. I think she is, in fact, uniquely for this position, and I congratulate her and I applaud him for making this decision today. Now, you talked about her background. Uh, her resume is impressive by anybody's standards. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Senior Advisor to the National Security Affairs of the Obama Campaign, Senior Fellow of Brookings Institution, Special Assistant to President uh, Bill Clinton, Master's and Ph.D. Rhodes Scholar at Oxford University. You couldn't get a more impressive resume. Yet, with all of that, Karen Finney, <laughs> John McCain tweeted his displeasure. He sent out this tweet, quote, Obviously, I disagree with POTUS, President of the United States, appointment of Susan Rice as National Security Advisor, but I'll make every effort to work with her on important issues. That's right, because the message from the president is get over it. She's going to be in this administration. I'm going to promote her. I'm going to give her an important position. And it's great to see that Susan is going to be in this position. You know, she's, I worked with her in the Clinton administration. She's also a mom. She's a working mom. I mean, she's a role model uh, for women as well. She ha also has done incredible things during her time at the UN, both for, on behalf of women and the LGBT community. I mean, this is someone who brings not just such a depth of knowledge, but as you mentioned, she's someone who really has the president's trust. And I think that's going to be critical given the hot spots that we've got around the world and the national security challenges that we're facing right now. He's got to really have people that he knows he can trust, their judgment that he knows he can trust around him, because he's going to have some tough decisions. Now, Congresswoman, one of your colleagues, uh, Republican Congressman Darrell Issa, he had this to say today about uh, Susan Rice. I want your reaction. Let me play it for you. You know, Susan Rice claims that uh, that she reads the the classified uh, dailies. Obviously, if she'd read the classified dailies, she could have been couldn't have been so wrong on Benghazi. It's unfortunate the president is rewarding some talking points that simply weren't true. A congresswoman. Well, you know what I tell you, Reverend Al. I am just so disappointed at the continual. Uh, bashing of Susan Rice and other people in the president's administration and the president himself. I think Daryl Issa does himself and his party a disservice by continuing to take the low road instead of looking at what we could do as a nation together. I am certainly hopeful that, uh, as John McCain has said, that he is going to work with her on big issues. I hope that those who are of goodwill and those who want to really see this country move forward will take the same advice and do what John McCain has said he will do. Now, I think that we have to at some point say to people like Daryl Issa, you need to go someplace and, and as, as Karen Finney says, get over it. <laughs> Let us do what is necessary to move this country in the right direction. And I think that Susan Rice is, in fact, the best positioned person for this particular role that we have in the country today. And so, you know, I'm just very, very saddened by his tone uh, and by the negativity that continues to come out of not only him, but other members of his party. He's also just wrong. I mean, as we now know, everything that we've seen in the emails that have been released and all of the evidence that we've been able to look at suggests that everything that Susan said from the beginning was exactly what was known at that time. And in fact, as you and I talked about, I think when this happened, she was protecting our national security interests because we know that General Petraeus was very concerned at that time about information getting right. out about the CIA installment. I say that's a patriot. How dare they call her a liar? They should apologize to her. They'll never do it, but that's what she's owed from these men. Yeah, and, and I've been saying that that for months she said what she was told and it appears that what she was told is what they knew at that time and it was the thing that was in the best interest of the United States of America at that moment that's what should be guiding those decisions Absolutely. not whether or not you know some silly Republicans are gonna attack her from the from the right Come
I mean, you know what? No, no. Go ahead. I'm I was going to say, nobody likes a sore loser. That's what Daryl Issa is. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's true. But let, let me also say this. The president also made another very bold uh, appointment today by uh, appointing uh, Samantha Power. Uh, as his uh, uh, appointee to the U.S. Uh, nominee to be U.N. ambassador. Now, when we look at her background, she's a human rights journalist and academic. She's author of A Problem from Hell. It's about America's response to genocide in the 20th century. She's a Pulitzer Prize uh, recipient, worked on National Security Council staff since 2009. I mean, to have someone who's written about genocide in the 20th century and the United States response to it is a bold nomination. There's no question about it. I think she brings a very strong voice to the UN and to all of the people who will be working with her at the UN. And I, and I just can't imagine that anyone would question at this stage of the game either of those two nominations because if they do, then they not only have a problem with qualified people but with qualified women in particular. Absolutely. Karen, you said <laughs> that this is the president's way of sending a message to the Republican that uh, he's not going to bow and he's not going to bend. He's moving forward with his agenda. That's exactly right. And, and I think both of these women and their expertise and their talent represent, I think, a part of where he wants to go with his foreign policy agenda, the challenges that we're facing on the foreign policy and national security sphere. And as you said at the beginning, it sends the message, you know what? I'm in charge. I get to decide who goes in what role, not you. Two strong women, and I've had two <laughs> strong women to start the show tonight. Congresswoman Marsha Fudge, thank you thank for your you. time tonight. Thank you. And